Who was Guido Keller? A daring aviator, a fuman privateer, an author, a nudist, a madman. He was all of that, but he also was the Annuncio's best friend. But he was also without a doubt the most bizarre person in Fiume. Keller already stands out in Fiume because of his appearance, with his long black hair, luciferic beard and wide awake black eyes. He was normally silent around people and it said that he rarely smiled. He was 28 years old when his adventure in Fiume started. He was there from the first minute. It was him who picked up the Annuncio, the Commandante in Venice and brought him to Ronchi. He was the one that built the Commandante up again and again when he doubted the success of Fiume. He was the one that maintained close relations with the people while the Annuncio locks himself away in his palace. With his daredevil attitude, he inspired the legionaries and people of Fiume. The Annuncio loved that young, energetic man almost as much as himself. One comrade of Keller's regiment commented on how Keller doesn't care for his appearance. He saw Keller one day in an elegant suit with a tie, but already on the next day his suit and shoes were covered in mud. When Keller was asked why he looked like that, Keller responded and said that he climbed the mountain just because he wanted to see the dawning sun. Around this time in Fiume, Keller had long forgotten that his real name was Baron Keller von Kellera und Wolkenkeller and that he came from a Lombardian aristocrats with Swiss origins. He left the Swiss school he attended without graduating because he simply was bored. He wanted to live, and that meant for him, Rome. He was fascinated with planes and modern machines, just like how the futurists were. He especially loved flying, as he already got his pilot license while being only 20 years old. Now, he was only waiting to test his skills as a pilot. In the meantime, he tried being a sculptor and trained in martial arts. Now that the Great War had started, Keller was called to service. But Keller quickly drew attention to himself because of his antics. He was a new man, how Nietzsche envisioned one, a free man. One that will only do something when he himself sees the reason behind it. But soon he would be temporarily imprisoned because of his behavior. But Keller was shortly after that freed because the Italian Air Force lacked pilots. Now Keller was back on the front and was already making a name for himself as the hard ace which he drew on his plane. At this time, in the air camp, Campo di Aello, he started growing his signature beard as a revolt to the old clean militaristic ways. He thinks that militaristic discipline is outdated and stated at the time that Italy does need to emulate Prussia's militarism. He thinks that uniforms are useless. He rather walks around in his pajama while he's wearing a face. He is rather sunbathing completely naked on the beach while his comrades would sweat in their tight uniforms. His clothing, his attitude, his symbolism, this is what Keller thinks defines him. He would always take books on his flights to battle. Keller would strap the book around his thigh with a cable. He would read the tragedies of Shakespeare while flying. When he would return, he rather talked about the book and his opinion on it, instead of reporting on the battle. He also often dropped notes above Austrian outposts, where he would challenge them to a 1v1 in the sky. In this war, he would meet the Annuncio. His first meeting with the Annuncio that actually would last more than some minutes was when they both were on patrol. But suddenly, both of them would land on the open field because the plane of the Annuncio was causing problems. While they both were on the ground, Keller dedicated a poem to the Annuncio, which started their friendship. After the war, Keller followed 
the Annuncio into Venice. Keller would play a major role in the conquest of Fiume. The Annuncio would offer him the position of being the second one in command, but he declined. Sitting all day in his office, writing boring laws wasn't Keller's thing. The first thing Keller did was creating his personal legion for protecting the Commandante the Annuncio, a special legion consisting of losers, ex-junkies and mentally unstable people. People would call them the Scum Brigade, but Keller wanted exactly those people. He wanted a new world, but first he would need to destroy the old one. That's why he wanted the most fringe people that he could get. He knew that those people wanted to destroy the old world as much as him. This legion would be called La Disperate. Keller was certain that these guys would be the best soldiers of Fiume. Now Keller would start living life to the fullest, at least in his way. In Fiume he would wear casual clothing if he wasn't running around naked. He would sleep on trees. He was vegetarian and would use every chance he could get to ignite a grenade to show how happy he was. One of his favorite activities was imitating howling wolves in the night to scare young couples. Keller would even tame an eagle and give him his name, Guido. And yet, Keller is not just a man of action, but also a philosopher and author. Keller would create the yoga movement, the union of three fingers. Their symbol would be a swastika for five petaled rows. The movement would be based on the idea of free love. Keller saw this movement as a countermeasure to the conservative elements that would surround the Annuncio. He would take part in the creation of a newspaper, which also was called Yoga. He would go into a self-imposed exile in the mountains of Fiume after the Annuncio tried censoring his newspaper because he thought that the newspaper could harm Fiume's reputation. On the 14th November of 1920, would fly over the Italian chap of deputies and drop carrots and beads with a note attached. The note said, Guido Keller brings the parliament and the government of lies and fear, a symbol of their worth. This was Keller's way to show the people how laughable the government is. The Italian police would try to arrest him on the basis of terrorism, but Keller would fly to San Marino, where he would be given the title of the representative of San Marino in Fiume. Now, with diplomatic immunity, the Italian police was forced to let Keller go so he could return to Fiume. But Keller's influence in Fiume was starting to decline. The Annuncio now rarely wanted to speak with his former best friend. As the events of the bloody Christmas unfolded, Keller refused to shoot at Italian soldiers, and rather put on the armor of a knight and rode into the battle with a sword. After that, his path and that of the Annuncio separated which also was the end of Keller's adventure with Fiume.